Okay, guys, here we are in episode 8. Isn't that happy? Colons are done! I know we're all very, very pleased about that. But it's time to move on. Uh, we're on page 150 now as a bit of a reminder, and we are starting with the Volturi Coven. Now, the thing with the Volturi Coven, <clears throat> I'm going to have to do this one a bit differently. I don't have a set schedule for this one. I had set numbers and what I wanted to do with everyone with the Cullen thing and only altered it a bit. This one, I've skimmed through it. I don't know how long I'm going to be talking on some of these sections. So, basically, I'm just going to go until I don't want to talk about it anymore. You know, I may get one profile done. I may get all of them done in one ground. I don't know. But the Volturi, like the Cullens, have uh, their Volturi coven description. Then they have their profiles. Then they have where, they're, where they live. So this is what I'm definitely going to do. Because, as I pointed out, in the, in the Cullen section, that was really stupid to have the coven and then all the profiles and then where they live. Where they live needs to be up front, particularly for these guys, because even though talking about the beautiful Cullen house was really stupid, because they aren't, they're nomadic. Meyer, do, Meyer doesn't want to admit it, but the Cullens are nomadic. They move around. That's not their permanent residence. The Volturi residence actually makes sense because they are completely stationary. They don't go anywhere. So this is the one time where a house, talking about their location, actually does make sense. So that's, I'm going to go out of order on this one. I'm going to talk about the Volturi coven, then I'm going to go to their location. <clears throat> so I may not get to profiles this time around, just so you know. Uh, but let's not waste any time. Let's start talking about the Catholics, shall we? Warning up front, I may go into Catholic rage. For anyone who knows about that, you know that'll be a really interesting ride. Let's go, guys. She keeps calling them the equivalent of royalty. It's because it's like she's afraid of actually calling them government. Because I know monarchy is a type of government, but because Meyer is very limited in her thinking, <clears throat> when she says government, I'm sure she thinks of the U.S. government. You know, representative const uh, constitutional representation, that sort of thing, democracy, that, not monarchy. But monarchy is table, so we have to call them royalty. Even though they actually do appear to run more of a government system, you know, it's a genuine. It's it's not really a monarchy, the way she's making it out. They, the all three of them talk. They talk with their guard. They have a system. It is more representation. And you know, people could overthrow the Volturi if they wanted. I've pointed that out already. You know, I'm going to be going into it more when I recap Breaking Dawn, but I have pointed out they can be overthrown. They're not invincible. It's, it's, it's silly. They're, it's a, but it's, she uses royalty, I can tell, to emphasize that they're evil because a monarchy is evil. Don't you know? The Volturi reside in their city, Volterra, Italy. Volterra, Italy is uh, flanked by dashes. Those were unnecessary. Meyer still hasn't gotten the use of, hasn't gotten the hang of the use of the dash, I can see. So you've been controlled for 3,000 years since the time of the Etruscans. So why are they Italian? Oh, that's right, because they're Catholics! Now, they prefer to stay indoors, out of the sight of humans. They're evil. Using other vampires as subordinates to serve their coven, occasionally they also use human minions. One... I love how she calls the vampires subordinates, but humans are minions. Love that one. Two, I'm a proud minion, and that's my overlord. His minions could beat up Aro's minions any day. Bring it. Okay, already the Volturi's villains is falling apart with this next paragraph. Before you yeah. Between 400 and 500 A.D., the Volturi launched an offensive against the most powerful coven in the world, the Romanians. Rather than simply attack the Romanians, the, except they did attack the Romanians, the Volturi first cleverly demanded that the Romanians conform to laws that the Volturi claimed benefited all vampire kind. When the Romanians scornfully, re scornfully refused, the Volturi were able to categorize and publicize their strike as a move for the good of all vampires rather than a standard territory dispute. Okay, you can argue that's clever, you can argue that's stupid, whatever you want, except it also has a point. It does benefit all vampire kind. They, that was a legit move. 
The Romanians, uh, we'll be getting into them later, they have their own section. The Romanians were public figures. They were all over the place. They were slaughtering humans indiscriminately. They weren't hiding what they were doing. They, it, this wouldn't have lasted because there are only a handful of vampires in comparison to six, seven billion humans. We'd eventually kill them. You just, you, you can't go through that many people. It's impossible. <clears throat> so the Volturi had a point. But no, Meyer just flat out said it wasn't a legitimate concern. They faked it. They didn't really want to worry about secrecy. And the Romanians lost because the Romanians had created vampires for their empire with less foresight and their physical skills were not a match in the long term for our psychically gifted choices. Aro called his soldiers the Volturi Guard, making it clear they were subservient to the actual Coven of Five. And after the Volturi had defeated the greater part of the Romanian Coven, they began spreading their doctrine throughout the world. Their basic operating premise was that keeping the existence of vampires a secret was beneficial to all. Anyone who would not keep this secret was an enemy to the vampire public. While many vampires questioned the validity of this premise at the time, after all, what could a human do to a vampire, despite any knowledge that human might have? None of them wanted to take on the Volturi fresh off their victory from the Romanians. <clears throat> uh, nice, nice dig in humanity, Meyer. I mean, really, you know, you, you know, I've made this point before. Uh, Meyer really kind of shares uh, the same viewpoints as, uh, as you know, a character on a character on Supernatural. And I don't really need to go into his description because um, everyone knows who this character is, even if they don't watch the show. Meyer very often spouts the anti-human hate-em viewpoint of, um, you know, the devil! Come on, Meyer! However, she also just made my point for me. Uh, even though I know better, Meyer doesn't. Meyer thinks humans are completely useless. Uh, nothing a human could possibly do to a vampire, you know, even in this technological age. As I said, Google military weapons these days, Meyer. Your vampires would be killed. Um, she just, in her mind, though, she just proved my point. Humans, in her vision, are completely helpless. So why do they hide? Why do they ever hide? Why were the vampires hiding in the imaginary sewers of England? Wait, why do they hide? This makes no sense. And she just undermined everything right there with that simple dig at humanity. What could a human do to a vampire? So why did they buy it? Why did they buy it at all? Why didn't they all rise up and attack the Volturi anyway? We're not going to be cowed like this. We want to live high on the hog. You know, we want to kill all the humans we want. We'll take you on, because, you know, the Volturi are not the only psychically gifted vampires in the world. This, this should not have happened. Now, as time passed, more vampires were born to a world where the Volturi existed as benevolent governors, and slowly the Volturi became accepted by their own positive, self-created definition. Okay, before I continue, I'd just like to point out, Meyer's trying to make it out like totalitarian government, you know, all that, except it fails, because as I've what do they do? They aren't imposing any law over anyone except stay out of sight. That's it. And that is beneficial. That really is. Vampires can feed quietly. They don't have to, you know, worry about anything. There's no publicized news. You know, they don't have to worry about humans creating weapons that could kill them, which, you know, humans already have if you Google them, Meyer. They're no, they're, their secrecy law is actually legitimate. Their no vampire babies law is legitimate. Their no southern vampire wars please is legitimate. Every rule they've imposed is legitimate. They're not a dictatorship. They're not. They don't. They let. They. You, and look, look, look right here. Many of these new vampires were created by the Volturi themselves, indoctrinated, and then let loose into the world. Meaning, they don't do anything with these people. They don't curb their diets. They don't. They don't do anything to them. They don't rule anything. They let these people have almost complete freedom, save for. Don't let anyone know what you are. That's it. So, why is Meyer determined to make them out to be the bad guys in the, oh, they they're, they set themselves up as rulers, you know, and they're royalty, and oh, they're so evil for doing that, except what are they ruling? What are they doing over there? They don't do anything. They don't do anything. They're not imposing law over anyone. They're not imposing their will over everyone because they're not doing anything. So this fails on every conceivable level. And again, it just makes them look responsible. It makes them look like the good guys in this 
this story because they're the only ones who said, uh, you know what, we really shouldn't be setting ourselves up, you know, uh, on as public figures and living in castles and letting everyone know what we are and slaughtering humans indiscriminately because you know what um if we keep doing that the food supply is eventually going to run out and humans are kind of clever and you know we might you know we should keep secret and kind of curb our feeding a bit we really should then also as i pointed out in new moon it seems to be necessary because aro when when Edward was captured by the Volturi with Bella in New Moon, Aro was polite. Aro was nice. Aro said, we really don't want to kill either of you. So the only solution here I can see to, to make sure that things, you know, stay quiet and normal is uh, change Bella. Even though by their own rules, they both should be killed. Or at least Bella should have been. Even after Edward was going to publicly sparkle, he, or after, of course, he was going to mass murder the entire square to get himself noticed by the Volturi, but he opted out of that plan because, you know, he didn't want Carlisle to think he was a mass murdering psycho. You know, not because it was wrong, but because he didn't want Carlisle to think badly of him. So, Edward broke the rules. Edward was bad. Edward was going to call attention to himself. Edward was going to break every single rule imaginable. And he's got a human there who knows what he is. And what's Aro's solution to it? Change the human. We won't kill you. You can go home. And Edward's response is to puff up like an angry cat because Aro is daring to tell him what to do. And no one tells Edward Cullen what to do. Aside from that being complete idiocy because you know, you're surrounded by 25 vampires, half of which are extremely powerful in the gift department. And you only have defense. You, you don't have offensive abilities. All you have is Alice, who can see the future, and yourself, who can read minds. They would end you easily. Even if they, they didn't even have to use their psychic abilities, if they didn't want to, they could have just torn you to shreds. They could have just gangbanged you right there. But any time Aro said, secrecy rule needs to be maintained, so uh, change Bella and we'll all go home happy. No! I'm not gonna do that! You can't make me! So, it's obviously necessary because, apparently, all the vampires in Meyer's universe are spoiled, rotten brats. So again, Volturi don't seem like villains here. They seem very put-upon, responsible people who are trying to maintain some semblance of order in this chaotic vampire world because they're all children who don't know how to restrain themselves. So... Yeah, you failed with your villains, because they don't seem like antagonists, other than the hammy <laughs> mustache twirling you give them like they're Professor Fate. Oh, quote from Meyer at the bottom. And, uh, <laughs> it's a good one. There aren't very many bad guys in my novels. Even the bad guys usually have a pretty good reason for the way they are, and some of them come around in the end. I don't see the world as full of negatives. Okay. One, I've been reading this Volturi Coven thing, and I have seen absolutely nothing in the Shades of Grey department, other than the mistake you made that I pointed out. Like, yeah, we don't see the Volturi as villains. We see them as responsible people trying to force some semblance of order on a bunch of pack of, a pack of wild dogs. But it's very clear, writing this slant, it's always... Oh, they cleverly demanded the Romanians conform, so their strike looked like a move for the good of all vampires. Blah. And they're changing all these humans and indoctrinating them and making them love them and then letting them loose in the world so their doctrine and their regime will spread and Aro's always creating his collection and... There's not a positive slant on here at all. It's obviously written with evil, 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 evil after every word. That fails too. Meyer's an idiot. And also, there aren't very many bad guys in my novels, so, you know, I, I can think of eight right off the top of my head. Uh, Carlisle Cullen. Oh, I, I, we, we looked at his profile. He's a bad guy, man. Changing people and then not caring what they do, just letting them kill humans left and right, and then, oh, damn, now we have to move. Not bothering to even clean up the mess, not caring what happens afterwards, you know, that's pretty evil, and you know, finding a rape victim on the street and saying, Hey, I think uh, my son would like to bang that. Whew, she's too hot to let die. No, that's a waste. I gotta give her to my son. And, uh, you know, there's... He's a real... And also, you know, this, I met this 16-year-old girl once, and I think she liked me. And I'm kind of hard up, because, uh, 
Even though Edward's gay, he won't put out. I'm going to change her for my wife. You know, Carlisle's pretty evil. And then there's Edward, you know, who's a mass murderer who thinks of torturing people all the time. Yeah, he's a bad guy. There's Jasper. Need I go into that one? There's Alice, you know, who spent 30 years trying to curb her diet, but not really caring enough to actually succeed until 30 years later. Uh, there's Esme, who just stands by and smiles primly and demurely while her family slaughters people, but she thinks it's so wonderful because she's getting to play house. Um, there's Rosalie, who uh, hunted down her uh, rapists and murderers, essential murderers, yes, but uh, also very casually throughout. I've only killed five people. Oh, wait, yeah, Royce had these two guards over in front of his door. Yeah, they didn't take very long. Yeah, I just killed them. Yeah, she's pretty bad. There's Emmett, who uh, thinks it's funny that he killed a bunch of people when he was younger. Oh, I'm such a scamp. Hoo-hoo, you had so much trouble with me. Uh, there's Bella, who doesn't really care that all of her family members are mass murderers and just kind of puts it out of her mind. I don't want to think about that, so I'm not gonna. You know, I, I can think of a few have some bad guys in your novels. They're just straight out evil. They have no redeeming features. Don't say you don't have villains, because you do. And you know what, Meyer? There's a difference between a bad guy and an antagonist. A bad guy is all you think of because you yourself are nothing but a childish moron. <sighs> this, this series needs a proper antagonist, and you don't have one. Not even the Volturi are proper antagonists because, like I said, they're more sympathetic than your heroes are. In the 20th century, the advances in human weapons technology came to be viewed as many vampire came to be viewed by many vampires as a validation of the Volturi's now inspired seeming laws. Well, inspired seeming law I, I don't even know what that means, but the thing is, no, it's that it should not be viewed by many vampires. It is a validation of the Volturi's now inspired seeming laws. <laughs> Whatever that I I don't even know what she wrote there. It is validation. Because uh you know what? Check this out. It doesn't matter how fast and sparkly and hard-skinned your vampires are, Meyer. You gave them their weakness. Fire. They they can't survive this, and they can't, and they may be able to run, I think I calculated like 186 miles per hour, they may be able to run that, but these things are a little bit faster than that. They can't run. Rank is marked by the color of the individual's cloak. The darker the cloak, the higher the vampire's rank. So, in other words, the truly evil Volturi members like Jane and Alec are in black, black, black. I have nothing to say to that. It's so charming. <clears throat> and there it is. Generally, the Volturi do not keep the vampires of the world under close supervision. You're undermining them as your established totalitarian dictators. They set up shop, declared themselves emperor, and then said, okay, we're done. We're, do whatever you want. We don't really care. We just want to say we're in charge. I mean, not only does that undermine the their evil villains who rule with an iron fist comment, but it also undermines them as a villain because they're the Volturi who don't do anything. I mean, what? They don't do anything. They don't do anything! These aren't a staff, these aren't good villains, because they just sit around and don't do anything! Why should I care about a villain who sets itself up and says, we're all king, and then said, doesn't even supervise the vampire community? Which is, ah, whatever. They can do whatever they want, you know, we just want to say we're king. I can't get over this. Many vampires around the world aspire to be accepted into the Volturi as vampires are drawn to power. I repeat, what power? What power? What power is to be had? What power do they hold? What? You can't just say power, Meyer. It doesn't work like that. There has to be power over something. And what do they have power over? Nothing! Okay, that's their intro. Now I'm going back to their little home, Volturi Lair, because and I think that's where I'm, I'm going to stop. We're not going to do profiles today. Uh, because, like I said, it's pointless to have these two sections split up. Split up. They should be together. So, here we go. Volturi Lair. Oh, look. The Cullen home. 
the Volturi layer. Yeah, clearly there's no slant here. We're being equal and even. The Volturi founded the town of Volterra 3,000 years ago. During the time of the Etruscans, the Volturi still own almost all the property in the vicinity. How exactly do they do that? Yeah, that's so full of fail, I don't really need to get into it, do I? The main structure of the Volturi's actual home is a castle constructed during the medieval times, built into the walls of the ancient city. Or maybe it was built 3,000 years ago. There's a clue. These historic buildings are a little old. They're talking about the entrances to the castle. I don't care about the entrances. You're not telling me anything that's interesting or informative about this. But here's the thing that caught my attention. The castle can also be accessed from Volterra's sewers. Several drainage holes in the stone paved streets lead to often used Volturi passageways. These drains are covered by human grills that are often too heavy to be lifted by several human men together. So that's how they keep out the humans. They just make them really heavy. Except they're to the sewers. Humans have to get in there to access them when something goes wrong with them. Even if they were too heavy for several human men to lift altogether, what apparently Meyer thinks manhole covers and the like are lifted by men with their bare hands. <laughs> apparently there's no such thing as, you know, as a machine or something to help lift that up. No, it has to be done by men with their bare hands, so that's how they keep humans out. We are going on and on and on about how Heidi brings in the humans for lunch. Because, you know, they're evil. Did you know that? They're evil. And this has everything to do with the Volturi layer, emphasizing how Heidi leads all these humans to dinner. <sighs> Meyer, I don't buy the Volturi as evil because Heidi is leading all these tourists to their deaths. Because, you know, you just confirmed that the Cullen death toll is in the thousands and they don't give a damn about what happened. In fact, they're laughing about it. Oh, we were such scamps. Alice took 30 years to curb her diet, and she's a bouncy, twee little twit. Edward killed hundreds of people in his three-year stint. This, this doesn't work. And there's Carlisle, who does nothing but talk about how, oh, they're, they're such good, wonderful people, and we are so good because we abstain from killing humans, even though... You didn't watch them or help them not kill humans and didn't care. You just let them kill whatever they wanted and just moved. Never learned from your mistakes. You just moved to avoid punishment for it. The turret contains the main meeting room of the Volturi and also the dining room. They have made no attempt to make it comfortable for humans. The stone walls are not insulated and there is no heat or cooling or artificial lighting because they're evil. You got that? Dispose of the bodies and their victims through the drainage grate in the center of the room, and routinely these remains are reduced in mass by acid. Lovely. <clears throat> but at least they gave a reason as to where the bodies go. Fire doesn't usually do that. Well, that makes me wonder, though. Where's the acid pit? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh. That's them. We have a picture of the clock tower where Edward did his death by strip tease. This is just me, or except for the character profile pictures, these sketches are kind of vague. And you know, that's a real place. We saw it in the movie. It is real. This thing exists, as does the city of Volterra. So they have these quick little sketches. Oh, that's what it looks like. We could have just Googled it. So this seems to me as, you know, cheating. So, Volturi, Volturi. We've got them going. Uh, when I come back to this, we will start on their character profiles. It's going to be fun. Hm. Can't wait for that. But for now, I've screamed enough. I'm going to go rest my voice. Hm. See you guys around. See you for more Catholics in Episode 9. Oh